Hey guys, it's Dom from mobiledom.co.uk and today I've got a performance of, of the MediaTek MTK 6589T on the Zoppo ZP980. The MTK 6589T in the Zoppo ZP980 is comprised of four ARM Cortex A7 CPUs and a PowerVR SGX544 MP4 GPU which also has four cores. Now, the Cortex A7s are what people are moaning about because the number simply isn't very high. 7 is lower than 9, so that must mean that Cortex A7 is far worse than the Cortex A9 used by Samsung in the Exynos 4 Quad or Nvidia in the Tegra 3. But in fact it isn't. It's merely a lowered power version. And in some cases, Cortex A7s are actually faster than their Cortex A9 counterparts. So if we hop into CPU Z for Android, which, as a side note, is an awesome free app that you should all go download at once. You can see the Cortex A7 architecture is shown at the top, then the clock speed at 1.5 GHz, then there is four cores, the ranges, so from 500 MHz to 1.5 GHz. The status of each core is actually live, so if I was to do some more intensive things, it'd go up and down. The CPU load is a percentage, then who makes your GPU and what model it is. So if we go into the next tab, you get a bit more in-depth detail about the phone, the screen resolution, the RAM, the Android version, etc. And you realise this is all running at 1080p. So it's running Android at 1080p, live updating, and it's not exactly chugging. So it can't be too bad, can it? Now, you all know I'm not too fond of synthetic benchmarks, but I know lots of people like them. So I downloaded four and got results from three, as the fourth, which is a 3D mark, crashed whenever I tried to run it on whatever benchmark. But I took screenshots as to not bore any of you. So you can see N22 got 15,119, Quadrant Standard got 4,440 and Geekbench 3 got 392 on single threaded and 1,263 on multi threaded. So take that as you wish. But what is more important is day to day usage. So with that in mind, let's fly around the OS. I'm just going to open up a couple of apps and show you their speed. First, Chrome. If we go to a heavy site like The Verge, once it's fully loaded, it's smooth scrolling. There is a bit of fuzziness and artifacting when you try and zoom but it's still very, very usable and it clears up after a second or so. Even with a few tabs open with the gesture tab switching, you can still see it's really, really good. Next, if we pop over to YouTube and try and watch an HD video, I'll just pop over to my channel to stop any copyright issues and... Um, the HP Veer, let's watch that one. As you can see, absolutely flawless playback. No dropped frames, no stutter, and the audio is perfect. Next is kind of the one everyone wants to know about, gaming. Now as you all know, I'm not much of a gamer, smartphone or console wise, but I downloaded a couple to test performance for you guys. First off, some light ones, Angry Birds, and apart from everything being phenomenally and hilariously small, it runs really, really well. Same if we open up Temple Run, smooth playback and graphics, nary a stutter to be seen. And the same with one of my favourite games, Unblock Me. It's a simple game, and therefore it runs very, very well. Now, if we move on to more challenging games, we have Shadow Gun Dead Zone. It plays alright. It's not the most high-end, graphics-intensive app, but it's up there. But it doesn't run that well, if I'm brutally honest. It drops frames, it lags, and it's just... Meh. A game that I didn't think I'd like, and a game I also thought would run like a complete dog, was Dead Trigger. It became one of my favourite games I've ever played. It ran smooth, I never saw any dropped frames, there was no lag, it was just smooth playback and gameplay. And in a first person zombie shooter, you need it to keep up. One game that the MTK 6589T couldn't keep up with on hand was Real Racing 3. This just chugged and chugged and chugged, and was well, nearly unplayable. Another place that I found lag that I didn't expect to was the camera app. This has some severe shutter lag sometimes. And I say sometimes because sometimes it is. Sometimes it's no slower than my Nexus 4. Sometimes it took over 5 seconds to take the photo between me hitting the shutter button and it actually taking the photo. And as anyone who's actually tried to take a photo knows, that's just too long. So there we have it. The MediaTek MTK 6589T performance review. The first quad-core Cortex A7 SoC in the world. So how did it stack up? Quite well actually, it's not slow in any way, shape or form. Though personally I think 1080p screen is pushing it and a 720p screen 
would have been better to show off the SOC's muscles. Though the fact it's running Android at 1080p without stuttering everywhere is phenomenal in and of itself. Do I wish it was a bit more grunt? Yeah, but I always do. Oh well, I guess we'll have to wait for Cortex A12. Anyway guys, this has been Dom from mobiledom.co.uk. You can get me on Twitter, which is twitter.com forward slash mobile underscore dom. You can circle me on Google+, Plus, which is gplus.to forward slash Domenico Lamberti. And that's all guys. Toodle pip.